Okay, YouTube, let's get something straight. Card games are expensive. And a lot of us know this, but we still play it and we play really bad decks because of it. And our and if we try to play a good deck, it's not always a good complete deck and it really sucks. So that's the difference between a good deck and a bad deck. One sucks, one is good. Of course we already knew that already. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to go with an incomplete deck because you want to make seekers. Let's say you want to make seekers, but they're so expensive. Why don't you play something anti-meta? Something that'll cost you eighty to ninety dollars. Only eighty to ninety dollars. Now there are two decks like this right now. You can play G Gold Paladins, or you can go for my personal favorite on the on the subject, G Mega Colony. Because this deck, literally, I'm going to tell you a deck list that if you punch it all into TCGPlayer.com, or you can go to any other website, and you'll probably get around the same price though, is G Mega Colony. And you punch it in, and it's a simple $80 to $90 deck. You can trade for it. So, let's say you have two alt mile um, trial decks some of the Sicilis, and maybe some extra cards just thrown in. Now, the bonus for this is that there that stuff is in demand because those, Old Mile is actually a pretty good deck. Seekers are still expensive because of the fact that Thing Saver does restand a lot. So, Mega Colony is a good budget deck right now to build. If you're looking for the deck, literally there's an app called card fight vanguard database you go to the card section the three dots up in the top right hand corner tap that uh, for clans click all off tap on mega colony click ok go to sets all off go down to set five set four set three set g booster set one two three four and five then because of the fact that the only other thing that they're in other English cards and English promo cards. This will give you everything that's out in America right now that is English and you'll have promos to work with as well. So this deck pretty much builds itself after this. You only have one starter on the list. You have 16 tri you have four, uh, five triggers, five different triggers, but I doubt you want to play Machining Firefly since it really doesn't have a good effect that will be used in this deck that we're making. So obviously you put four of each trigger except Machining Firefly in and then maybe play two Brilliant Blister. Uh, you want to play four Dorcas, four Star Shield, three Scissor Finger. That's pretty much the whole deck besides playing this Mega Colony stuff and Battler D is an 8k. I really don't think you want to play that either. Next, you want to play a Abyss Di four Abyss Diver, four Buster Mantis, four Sweet Cocktail. Or, instead of playing Buster Mantis, because of the fact that it is a promo card, you can play Machining Armor Beetle, which is actually pretty nice. So, you're looking to go off of cheap decks, and you don't want to have to sacrifice anything, which is why we were going to be playing Mega Colony. It is a cheap deck, budget deck, and no matter what, you're not sacrificing anything in order to play it. Now, for your grade threes, you could play one of the limit break that limit break of Electro Zeus, or you could play two of the machine the two machining ones there. But they all like Electro Zeus doesn't have a really good effect. It costs a lot for Counter Blast of two to get ten thousand power and stun one. And it can really punish yourself when you're playing it because of the fact that when you ride it, all of a sudden your starter and everything else is gone. So you really don't want to lose your starter, considering your starter has a pretty useful skill. The starter skill is Generation Break 1, put it into the soul, choose an opponent's rear guard, stun it, it can't stand during your opponent's next stand phase and it can't intercept either. So that's a pretty nice skill. And if you ride to Electro Zeus, sure, it's gonna kill your opponent's starter. It probably will kill one or two grade ones that they have on the field. 
but it's not really gonna kill much else. Now, you can go to Dark Face. You played for Dark Face. He's a nice triple rare, but he's only about three and a half, four dollars at the time of this video. And it is February 3rd, 2016. So you're not looking at an expensive deck at the moment. If this changes, I'll make a second video, but you're gonna play four Longhorn Hunter. It's a great, it's a grade three. You're probably not gonna ride to it, seeing as you're riding to Darkface all the time. But you're gonna use him as stride. And if you do have him in your Vanguard or your Rearguard Circle, when he is placed on your Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, Counter Blast one, rest in opponent's Rearguard. It can't stand next turn, and it can't intercept. So it's pretty much the same thing as Crime as Young Executive Crime Bug. Now. For your stride zone, now this is the wonderful thing about Mega Colony is because you have a triple rare stride in here and he's only worth five or six bucks himself as well. So your most expensive thing is your perfect guard, your grade three and your grade, one of your grade threes and one of your grade fours. Everything else is single rare and common. Yeah, so Stun, Force Spear, Mutant Deity, Stun Beetle. Generation Break 2, Counter Blast 2, flip one of it over from the G zone and when an attack hits, all your opponents vent your opponent cannot stand and you can't normal ride. So unless they're playing Grand Blue, their Vanguard cannot attack. So that's a cool thing. Or unless they're playing a superior ride strategy, like I know Ezo has one, a few other ones. If you have a certain thing in your Vanguard circle, a certain thing in your rear guard circle, and a certain thing in your uh, certain two things in your rear guard circle, for Ezel, it's um Gareth and one other one. But Bowman, it has to be in your Vanguard Circle. You send all three of them into Soul. You send the two of them into Soul. You Superior Ride Ezel. Ezel. Uh, you Superior Ride Ezel. And that's the Superior Ride tactic. But because of the fact that that happens at Grade 2, it's not going to be helpful against this strategy. But this is a pretty much... The deck says to your opponent, you cannot play Vanguard if you can get the right conditions out. If your opponent can't guard your attack but will survive the turn they won't survive next turn because of the fact that all they can do is draw attack with rear guards and be done so if they stride they're getting rid of a card that they could discard and with their attacks of their rear guards they're you're gonna throw down 10k shields it's not like it's gonna be hard or impossible you're playing for a perfect guard you're not sacrificing anything for this deck you're going to be playing a pretty good decent deck your other grade 4 you're going to run 4 of is Poison Spear, Mutant, Deity, Parasphere. Effect, when you place down Vanguard Circle, rest all of your opponent's rear guards, and then if they have 3 or more rear guards, then you draw a card and give your Vanguard 5,000 power. Which, this is a nice thing, your Vanguard's going to be attacking for 31,000, sure, yay. But you get an extra draw. So, the draw power in the deck be, is actually a really helpful thing, considering you're going to be calling a lot of stuff. Let's go over each of the rear guard, the uh, cards effects. Of course, you have your four critical, your four heal, four draw. I already went over the starter's ability, but then you have Earth Dreamer, your stand. So this is why you always want to have rear guards in this deck, because of the fact that you attack, stand with your stand trigger, and attack again. You want to have rear guards in play. Plus, it helps, and you'll see why in a minute. But your uh, Earth Dreamer effect your stand trigger, which this is a common by the way. When now you at the beginning of your opponent's ride phase, put the unit on top of the deck, and if they have three or more rest unit rear guards, shuffle your deck and then draw two cards. So another hand advantage card. Why not? You could buy boxes of this set and build this deck. For a case, you could build this deck, have extras, and probably have a few SPs. So if you're looking for a deck that you can make for cheap and have a ton of stuff left over for trading later on, buy a case of this of G Booster Set 4. Open it up. Put it on YouTube. Make a few bucks off of it. You never know. You could do pretty good. Now, then you go on to Brilliant Blister. You're gr the two of them you're running for a grade one. When he, when you guard with it, you're, it's one of those things that you, when you're playing Phantom Blaster Diablo, Phantom Blaster Abyss, or Thing Saver Drag, well, not even Thing Saver Drag, if you're playing Phantom Blaster Abyss, or some Reek Standing Tactics like Victoplasma, 
you want to play this card. The reason we're playing two of it is you guard with it, and no matter what, whether it hits or doesn't hit, your opponent's vanguard cannot stand during their turn. Not by effects or anything, it cannot stand. So that's actually pretty helpful. Then, new face mutant little Dorcas, grade 3 search research is out dark face. And it's a single rare, so pretty cheap. What you do, you put call it to rear guard, you reveal a grade 3 from your hand, add dark face to hand, discard one card, and when paying the cost of stride, discard him for a grade as equal to grade 3. Obviously, you're playing Rebel Mutant Star Shield. It is your counter charge perfect guard. You guard with it, if you have another one in the drop zone, unflip one damage. Simple as that. It's pretty much a perfect guard. When this card when this unit boosts now, you have scissor finger, you're playing three of it. When it boosts a vanguard when it boosts, if all your opponent's vanguard or rear guard are rest, he gain the unit he boosted gives another two thousand power. Now, he's a common and it's not like you really want to play him, but if you're looking for just at a G set, you're gonna play scissor finger. Either that, or you can play the 8K if you want, because why not? It's a nice ride to card. I mean, I don't see a reason why not to. Now, we're playing four. Now, on to grade twos, we're playing four Abyss Diver. Its skill, Counter Blast, with this skill, is good before you ride to your grade three and you stride and all this other stuff, because of the fact that it is usable beforehand. He only has 8,000 power, so he's not going to be like your heavy hitting rear guard or your heavy hitting vanguard. And you're probably not even going to stand him for a second attack with that stand trigger. But he does have a useful effect. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. When he's placed on vanguard or rear guard, she's one of your opponent's rear guards, rest it, can't intercept, and it won't stand on your opponent's next turn. So you ride to grade 2. Let's say you're playing Royal Palace. Or you're playing gold paladins and they've already superior called a card in front row to grade three or grade two you can stun it and enforce and, and it and keep it from intercepting until your next turn and then you can get rid of it when you have an answer for it it's a nice little thing you can do then a single rare now most of the card most clans have been getting a when it attacks a vanguard if it was boosted use an extra do some weird stupid stuff like for pale moon call one from soul for royal paladin call one from deck for neo nectar call one from deck with the same name as a card in your rear guard different stuff like that aqua force stand one most of them have either been in trial decks and have a shiny version and a non-shiny version and are like two or three bucks in the non-shiny version but with charming mutant sweet cocktail you're looking at a single rare that's going to cost you like 50 cents. So that's like $2 for the whole thing. I could, for the same amount, I'd have to buy one of the alt miles uh, grade 2 when boosted. I'll give up the... I'll decide to make this deck instead and save myself money. Sorry, alt mile costs a few hundred dollars now. But mm, it depends on your pocketbook. Um, but Squeak Cocktail Skill, Counter Blast 1, when it attacks a Vanguard, if it was boosted... Choose an opponent's rear guard, rest it, uh, and until end of turn, your that card gets the ability until the end of your opponent's next turn. That card gets the ability at the end of your turn, if the if it's still rested, your opponent gets a draw card. So basically, counter blast one, stun it. It can intercept. It can't stand. And if at the end of your opponent's turn it's rested, you get to draw a card. More draw power equals better everything. Draw power is a good thing in this deck. Why do you think OTT is not a bad deck to build right now? It's got a decent amount of draw power. It's got a nice amount of power involved in it. And you kind of don't want to go against the OTT player who's shuffling cards back into his deck, drawing cards, and has a hand of size 16. Unless you're playing cards that have guard restrictions and then go ahead, you are an amazing person. I commend you for being, uh, having enough money to play those decks because this is a budget deck video and I make budget decks, so. Machining Armor Beetle is your next grade two. You're playing four of this. It is not expensive and it's, and most of the time when you hear something like machining in a name for Mega Colony, you think, Oh, it has to have the keyword Mega Colony in the name of something in order for it to go off. No, it doesn't. It 
when it called the Vanguard or Rear Guard, put another Mega Colony into the soul and stun one card from your opponent of your opponents. Now it's either this or you run the 12k or the 10k from the G Booster set. Up to you, but I would suggest this because it's got a little bit of a better skill. It doesn't just gain power, it stuns your opponent's rear guard. It keeps them from attacking you as much. It keeps the pressure off of you and applies pressure on them. Now, we're on to our main grade three. Imitate intimidating mutant dark face. He's an 11 k mega colony. He's an insect if you want to know that. He has twin drive. No special deal. You're playing four. Generation Break 2, Soul Blast 2, when one of your, when your opponent calls a card to rear guard, rest it. So that means, oh, I'm going to call all of this stupid stuff out. Okay, well, I Soul Blast 2 when you call that out. Soul Blast 2 when you call that out. Now you have two front row rear guards that are rested, and you're relying on a stand trigger to make a second attack. And plus, that's a defensive skill. So I'm being offensive the whole time, and then I'm ending my turn. You're taking your turn. And you're causing, you're losing pressure. You're retiring something to call something over that card that can't stand. So now I'm resting it again. So you're wasting cards out of your hand. This is a defensive deck for sure. This is offensive, offensive. But most decks don't rely on both equal of both. But this deck does. Like, I can rest your units. Nullify, I can nullify effects. Like, oh, I call this out. And now it's going to... Uh, attack you for like 21,000 because of stupid effects like Bruno. No, you don't get to. I rested it. Um, next is the uh, auto ability when you stride, counter blast one, um, rest two of your opponent's rear guards, uh, and until end of turn of your opponent's next turn, they get, if it's still rested, you draw a card. And they can't stand during your next your opponent's next stand fist. So when you go to stride, rest two automatically, and at the end of their turn, if they're still there or they didn't pull a stand trigger and decide not to use it to attack for some reason, or maybe they just didn't have a stand trigger, couldn't re retire it for pressure, you're drawing more cards. So that's the defensive aspect of it, but it's also offensive because of the fact that they're wasting cards from their hand to try to make you waste cards in your hand, but you're just drawing cards activating effects i'm sorry when mega colony gets their trigger that says oh when this when something with dark face in this name attacks put it in a soul draw card and give 5000 power that's going to be pretty beast because that's going to be more draw power extra power so more pressure is going to be added to your opponent it's just all around bad when your opponent hears mega colony they should be feeling fear of course, many people aren't going to because of the fact that different things get in the way. And, of course, there's people like who are playing Aqua Force or people who are playing Nova Grapplers, for crying out loud. Nova Grapplers, like a Mega Colony deck could go undefeated in a tournament, go up against Nova Grapplers and lose. You don't have, you have a lot of draw power, sure, but you don't have enough draw power to go up against a Mega Colony deck. A Mega Colony deck? Sorry, a Nova Grappler deck. A Nova Grappler deck will stand... Sand, 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 sand. Especially with the new cards that are revealed, which I covered in another video. You're standing, gaining power, attacking, standing again. So even if you didn't attack in the first place with one of your rear guards, they're standing. They're standing other rear guards giving power. They're gaining power themselves. So it really sucks when you go up against those decks. Aqua Force require you to attack in order to stand. But your Vanguard can attack, and you're playing stand triggers most likely in an Aqua Force deck, so you're standing your rear guards even more. You're losing. You, either way, a Mega Colony deck is not good against a restanding deck because it just doesn't work. Although, it does cause your opponent to have to have more cards in hand and be more defensive about it because the more cards you call to rear guard, the more power you gain, the less attacks they get, and the more draw you get. Most people aren't going to consider the drawing a problem, but when I'm sitting here gaining four, three cards on my turn, and another three at the end of your turn, so that's about six in between your turns, you're going to be a little cautious or a little on the s defensive side. But of course, we're going to play Longhorn Hunter. Uh, four of, it's a common from Jubilee, you have four 
counter blast one when you place on Vanguard or Rearguard. This is Generation Break 1 ability. Choose an opponent's rear guard, rest it, can't intercept, and it can't stand during next stand phase. Pretty decent. We went over Stun Beetle and we went over Purse Spear. So now you know that there is a lot of things that are going into this deck. Like when you do a deck, when you make a deck, you're thinking, oh, well, I want to make a deck that's going to be pretty good. I don't want to make something that's really bad. You could play the Secret Thing Saver slash Alfred Exeve. Voice crack. You could be playing that. And if you're playing that, you're. Is this a, I applaud you. I couldn't afford the deck if I wanted to, but it's a good, decent deck that will not let you down. You ride Thing Saver, you're pretty much guaranteed to win after that, unless they have that much defensive power. There are two other budget decks that we're going to go over. And I'm going to give you my deck list for them. I'll print the deck list in the comment section. In the, uh, yeah, in the section below the video. If I can never remember the name. But I'll list the deck list of this deck. As I said, it's $80 to $90. You can SP the whole deck out, and it'll probably cost you $120 to $130 for the whole thing SP'd out. It doesn't have that much price to it considering no effect triggers yet, so no more draw power, no extra draw powers. The uh, the deck's pretty basic, but it can stand its own. Most people overrule it because of the fact that other things, that it just isn't that good. People can negate the effects, people can just ignore the whole thing entirely and just play Nova Grappler, which is really popular now. But the two other decks that are pretty budget are Darker Regulars, which it's not really budget, but it's kind of budget. Or you can play, uh, which one is it? Uh, da, 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 da. You're playing Darker Regulars or you're playing Golds. G Era Golds. Darker, G era Darker Regulars or G era Golds? G era Golds, somewhere in the $80 to $90 range as well. Darker Regulars, somewhere in the 120 to 130 range, but that's a pretty decent deck as well. Not a consistent deck, but a decent deck. So, for now, this is our Budget Deck Mega Colony Review, G Mega Colony Review, and this is Cardfighter Phoenix signing off.